Hello everyone, today I'm working on one of these uh, sandwich station kind of units. We're at 25.7 Celsius, so we're at room temperature here. So let's get this thing ripped apart and see what's going on. So as you can see here, uh, condenser fans not running, compressors not running. So that leads us to believe is we're not getting power to this condensing unit. So always let's look at our obvious hints. And let's kind of just follow our power around here. And as you can see there, it says press zero to reset. So let's go ahead and test um, power into our high pressure switch. We have 115 in that tells us the temp controller is doing its job. We do not have to test power at the temp controller. Now let's test across potential difference and we're getting uh, 115 once again. So that's telling us we have an open high pressure switch. And as you can see, there's a little reset thing here. So let's go ahead and get this thing reset. Let's throw that little thing back on. And just like that, our compressor is running. Our con condenser fan is running. Our sight glass is filling up. So we definitely had a trip of the high pressure switch. Okay, so um, why did that happen? Why can that happen? You know, there's a number of reasons why. Um, we could have a failed condenser fan that's failing intermittently. We could have an overcharged system, non-condensables in the system, plugged condenser, or we just have a pressure switch that is failing uh, too early. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to fill our sight glass and we want to check our head pressure. Okay, we don't want to go ahead and start cleaning the condenser and all that stuff because we want to be able to do a before and after. Alright, so let's just do some editing here. You can see our sight glass is full. Our condenser saturation temperature is 116.7. Okay, our temperature is dropping nicely in the unit. And our ambience 80. Okay, so that tells us right now our ambient or our condenser splits around 36 Fahrenheit right now. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and see what our high pressure switch is set to, and it's set to 225 psi. All right, so let's go figure out what our head pressure should be. So we're going to take our ambient temp, and we're going to add our 30 Fahrenheit, which is our design condenser split. So our ambient temperature is 80 Fahrenheit, and then if we add 30 Fahrenheit, that's going to give us 110 Fahrenheit. Okay, we are getting 116 Fahrenheit. Okay, so we have a little bit of high head pressure. So we could have maybe non condensables in the system, uh, condenser that's plugged, uh, a lot of different things. And then, you know, we can go look up the pressures here if we want to. So um, 110 would equal 146. PSI is what we're looking for but really all I want to do is focus on the temperature okay let's make things easy let's not go back and forth and converting things we're looking for 110 Fahrenheit condenser saturation okay so let's go see what we can do to get this head pressure to drop all right so we do have a slightly plugged condenser here so let's just brush this down and let's see what that's going to do our pressure. So it's really important that you don't just come and clean the condenser. Okay, we want a starting point. And you can already see we're at 116 Fahrenheit saturation. And look at it drop, 115. And then now we're going down to 114. So let's see if we can get around our 110, which is our going to be our plus 30 on our ambient. So we're 80 and 113. It's dropping nice and slowly. So let's just be patient here. And I really can't stress the importance of don't just go there and clean the condenser. Okay, we want to know the starting point. We want to know if this switch was tripping early. We want to see if when we clean the condenser, is it actually dropping our condenser saturation temperature. All right, so as you can see here, we're at 110 and 78. And as you can see, our ambient temperature is dropping too now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to shut the unit off. We're going to spray some Viper in there. I want to get this uh, ambient temperature as low as I can because if we're recircling hot air, it's just going to run hot. The unit's not going to run efficiently. Okay, so we just fired back up. Let's see how close we can get to our 30 condenser split. 
And let's see if our ambient's going to start dropping nice and slowly. And we're just going to go ahead here and hit fast forward. Um, so we're going to watch our condenser saturation temperature. It's going to slowly start creeping up. We do not want to be above 110 Fahrenheit saturation. Okay. But also what's going to happen is our ambient temperature is going to start dropping nice and slowly now. Okay. Now we're not going to run at an 80. Hopefully we can run it a little bit lower than that. But let's let the Viper do its thing. And let's see what pressures and more importantly what temperatures that we end up with in the end. All right, so we're at 35 Fahrenheit, and let's just go ahead and check our saturation temperatures. You can see here, we're at 75 ambient now. See how the ambient has dropped down? The whole area underneath here is, night, is a lot cooler. We're at 104.6, so look at that, 75 and 104.6, and we're at 13.7 saturation temperature, and we are at box temperature of 34 Fahrenheit. All right, so as you can see there, our saturation temperature dropped down to 75 Fahrenheit. So now that area uh, below is a lot cooler now. Okay, the, the condenser isn't plugged. Um, the air is obviously going to be cooler. Okay, so we ended up with a 75 um, ambient. And if we add 30 Fahrenheit for a condenser split, that gives us 105 Fahrenheit. Okay, we were getting 104.6 Fahrenheit. So look at that. We're right in the range. And we came down a lot from what we had before from our original pressures and temperatures. Uh, we're way below that 225 cutout. So this thing is running good. And then our suction pressure. So we have a TXV. So instead of using our desired box temperature minus 20 Fahrenheit evaporator TD, we're going to use our current box temp because we have a TXV. So a lot of the videos you see, the reach-ins have cap tubes. This is slightly different. So our current box temp was 34 Fahrenheit. We subtract 20 Fahrenheit, and that gives us 14 Fahrenheit saturation temperature, which is what we had. We had like 13.7. So all the pressures are adding up. Everything's doing what it should be doing right now. Everything's looking really good right now. All right, so the last thing I want to do is remove uh, this refrigerant from my hoses, okay? Because if I pull my hoses off, I'm pulling out, you know, a couple ounces. And my sight glass is going to go low. So what we're going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back seat this king valve so I can take off my, that shuts off my hose. So now my high, everything that's in my high side hose, the red hose, is going to be pushed into my blue hose. Uh, my charging hose, the yellow one. Make sure that you are purging that one so we're not sucking any air in. And you can see here it's moving from one side of the system into the other side. Okay. And we want to make sure we take a look at our sight glass. So you can see there it's equalized, okay? So now I have 13 PSI left in both of my hoses. Okay, a lot better than what I had before. Okay, the over 100 PSI, our sight glass is still full. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put the unit into a pump down. So what we're going to do is go to this uh, little receiver here. And we are going to front seat it completely. So I'll just hit fast forward here. This thing was hard to record. Um, so that's front seated completely. What's that going to do? It's going to run the unit into a vacuum. So now we're going to go in our suction valve. Okay, we're going to back seat that fully. And then now we're going to back seat fully our king valve. And now we've removed all refrigerant from our hoses. We've put it all back into the system. And our sight glass is clear. We're all good. And I just want to add one last thing here. There is a chance that maybe our high pressure switch was failing prematurely. Because um, they empty this unit every night, I gave them the option to change it. I did send a quote for that. This calls from three weeks ago. They have not called back. So whatever we did, uh, cleaning that condensing unit has rectified the issue and we are all good.